Sorry I'm late. I just had this couple at my bar who would just not leave. And then there were these guys so like loud and obnoxious. It was like they've never even been in a restaurant before. It's like, we get it. You guys are having the best time of your life. Congratulations. Don't you hate it when people are just desperate for attention? No, I hate it when the last three people in the entire bar loiter for over an hour after your last call talking about completely asinine shit and then stupidly ask, Oh, sorry, were you waiting for us? Been there. No, and that's not even the worst part, right? One of these guys, he leaves me his number. Only one? Mm hmm I was barely putting up with their existence. I do not get people. Hey, at least you still got it. And you have, how do I say this? You have met dudes at your work before, correct? That is so different. How so? Well, if I'm working, then I should be the one to initiate things. So what you're saying, Avery, is if a guy wants to pick you up at work, he has to play hard to get? Yeah. No, no, wait. Hello again, and welcome to another episode of GBP, the Gratuitous Behavior Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to servers, hosts, bartenders. Are we internet famous yet? Dishwashers, busboys, and everyone else intended in the service industry. I'm your host, Wesley Green, and you just heard my co-host, the charmingly ambitious, if blunt, Avery Lee Davis. It's tragic that this is where I come express myself creatively. Cry me a creative river. It just never stops. Tough night, Avery? It's like never ceases to amaze me how many customers walk in like they've never been in a restaurant before. Never ceases to amaze me how many customers have a lazy eye. As always, we'll start with the news. Oh, and let me guess, there is no news. Seriously, nothing really tends to change in the world of serving or even bartending. Didn't the serving wage go up? You wish. Ugh, this segment is deaf. Which is why we're skipping it entirely and moving on to everyone's favorite bitch session. Stories of serving nightmares, a little segment we like to call You've Been Served. So we've been asked repeatedly by several of our listeners to radically alter this segment. I like radically? I'm not sure about alter. I won't name names, Joe, Kayla, Kate, George. But we've been asked to gossip less and specifically in reference to people in our respected workplaces, specifically in reference to them hooking up with each other. But that's specifically the best part of the show. I know. So tonight we're forced to broadcast dead air for what I can only assume will be a full minute. It's not a technical difficulty, but instead a moment to mourn all that we've lost. Joe, Kate, Kayla, George, I hope you're happy. Speaking of presumptuous people, so I had this couple at my bar and I don't know if it was their first date or what, but they were so into each other, it was disgusting. Don't just hate love. No, I hate it when love insists upon itself. Totally. By, by what you mean? I mean, I hate it when the couple canoodles in a corner for over three and a half hours doing everything but have sexual intercourse on a dirty table, in a public place, and expects me to not be grossed out by their extreme exhibitionism. Oh right, insists upon itself. Mm-hmm. But that's not even the worst part. When they finally decide they've made me uncomfortable enough and decide to get the bill, they're like, oh, sorry, can we get separate checks? Like, what the fuck is that? Avery, you can't tell people just enjoy their Tinder hookups in peace. No, they were clearly together. Just pay the stupid bill so we can leave the stupid restaurant and get on with our stupid lives. It's weird. It's not that weird. Bryce and I always get separate checks. And that's weird, Wes. You guys are common law. You live together. I'm sure your relationship will survive if one of you guys pays for the meal. It's just a quirk he has from working in finance. Plus, Bryce needs all of his books balanced all the time. If you know what I'm saying. I do don't know what you're saying, but it sounds overtly sexual. Very overt. Should we go on to listener emails, or would you like to hear in gratuitous detail just how I balance Bryce's book? Mm, if it's between listener emails and dirty sex talk, I'm going to go with dirty sex talk. Oh, hold on. I'm getting another call. Inappropriate late for a phone call. Could this be one of Avery's late night booty? Hey, there she is. Hey, Carter. Hey, how's it going? I'm so glad you're awake right now. I'm good. Just uh, recording the show. The Gratuity Behavior Podcast? Mm-hmm. 
the podcast for servers and bartenders and anyone with dentures in the service industry. That's my favorite. Thank you, Carter. Yeah, I was actually listening to an episode earlier, and I gotta say, you look just ravishing. I looked just ravishing while you were listening to my audio podcast. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I could just always tell when you're, you're looking good. You know, maybe it's the vocal inflection and your confidence. Oh, yeah, that's uh, quite a gift. It's not my own yet. If you know what I'm saying. I do. Weird. Um, yeah, anyways, I'm recording a show and I gotta go, so what's up? What do you want? Want? No, I don't. I don't want anything. I'm cool. No, I was having some of my boys, and you know, we were having truly wonderful and stimulating conversations. And I thought to myself, you know, self, who do you think would be able to add to the mirth and add dick discourse? Avery. That's a uh, that's so sweet. So, what exactly were you talking about? Oh, uh, just a lot, a lot of things. So many. Um, started with art. Mm-hmm. Went from art. To politics, natural progression, um, and then you know we slid right into child abuse, and and how we hate child abuse, we're against it. Brave stance. Um, I too am against child abuse, but I'm doing a show, um, so I gotta go. Yeah, okay, cool. Hey, look, glad we agree on that child abuse thing. Um, and look, I was thinking uh, afterwards, if you're not busy, that uh, you know maybe you'd like to you should you should just come over. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, right on. You know, I uh, respect that decision. Decision. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's been a pleasure talking to you. And um, you know, if you change your mind, the door is open. Metaphorically, and literally, it's open. It's, the lock is broken. Okay. Bye, Carter. Yeah. C'était qui? It's just Carter. He's drunk. Carter. Like his moxie. Mm, he's harmless. Have you ever, how do I say this, let him put his penis inside of you? Absolutely not. I don't believe you, but I'll give you the proverbial benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to proverbially throw up. Just asking. Can we just finish the show? Time for emails! <laughs> This week's email comes from Donnie in Rhode Island, who writes just like you can to queries at grapbehavior.com. Donnie writes, hey guys, love the show. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate the show as someone who doesn't actually work in the service industry. Weird. Enjoy the way YouTube, blah, blah, blah. People really, if you're trying to get your emails read on air, you know, keep them to the point or at least short. I personally like the praise. Donnie's question is this, why do restaurants and bars make it so hard to find the fucking bathroom? I don't know, because bathrooms are inherently gross and people don't want one staring at them in the face while they eat and drink. I mean, pragmatically, most bars and restaurants are old buildings. They just weren't meant to be bars or restaurants in the first place. It's not our fault. We're not architects. Yeah, Don's email should have gone to the Gastrointestinal Behavior Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to shitters in public places. You know, this is actually a stupid question. Better question is, why did so many customers get so stressed out about trying to find the washroom in the first place? People always come up to me and they're all like, bathroom? I'm like, no, Wes. Or, do you have a bathroom? Of course we do, we sell beer, we have a toilet that comes along with it too. The best of people who come in off the street and beg to use it. Like, by all means, come on in, buy nothing, and make a disgusting mess. Or, do you know where the bathroom is? It's like, no, I've worked here for six years and I still haven't found it. I think it's time to go. But you don't literally want to talk toilet humor all night? I can honestly say I'd rather die. You know, once this girl asked me to go into a bathroom stall with her and two other perfect strangers. I've been your host, Wesley Green, for my co-host, Avery Lee Davis, and her many, many paramours for our producer, Liz, behind the glass. We'll be back next week with another gratuitous take on the service industry. Thank you for listening to the Gratuitous Behavior Podcast. Mm. How do you think that went? Good, although I fear for your health. I could hardly tell you were drunk. Oh god, it's Carter again. I gotta go deal with him. Enjoy your questionable life choices. I'll post this soon. Okay, bye Wes. Later.
Oh, so stupid, Carter. I'm against child abuse. I'm also against cops killing black teens. They should kill all teens. I don't want to beat children. Hey, come on, Carter, you're so smart. You're so intelligent. Hey, ISIS's last video was poorly produced and terribly directed. Oh, that's terrible. Piece of crap. Oh, I'll go get the Jergens. Thank you.